One of the things is this, this country prides itself on the uh, First Amendment right, which mm -hmm. is the freedom of expression. And in this, what we see now in this polarization and the protest movement in the universities, how can the State Department send a clear message that people have the right to protest uh, peacefully and criticize Israel legitimately, but not being labeled as anti-Semitic, because this anti-Semitic things have been used loosely for anybody who criticizes Israel, considering that most of a, a large number of the demonstrators are Jewish. The Jewish Voices for Peace are demonstrating in, in, in the universities, whether it's in Colombia or in, in, in DC or elsewhere. So this is the message that has been used by um, lawmakers in, in Congress and also when some other people hear, whether you hear it uh, on TV or uh, in American media. So how can you send a message to say that it is legitimate to criticize Israel? But it's not obviously everybody condemned anti-Semitism or Islamophobia as it stands. This is it's not even open for question. This is we know. This is the message that's been repeated over and over again. But how can you separate the two? That's what I want to get to the bottom well, of. Well, uh, Nadia, uh, we believe that the two issues are incredibly separate. Um, uh, let me just say, though, that uh, what you're asking about is not... Uh, totally or necessarily in the remit of the State Department. I certainly understand your question. Uh, and in answering yours and your colleagues' questions um, about the demonstrations and protests that we're seeing, uh, I'm certainly not implying that any kind of criticism or critique of any kind of policy that a particular government is pursuing or not pursuing uh, is equitable to anti-Semitism or Islamophobia or anything like that. But it is true also, Nadia, that as part of these demonstrations happening on various college campuses, happening in various places, we have seen rhetoric, language, uh, commentary that is incendiary, that is offensive, that is rooted in anti-Semitism. And we've also seen things in the same place that is rooted in Islamophobia or the targeting of Arab Americans and Palestinian Americans. That's not hyperbole. That is, uh, I, I needn't point you any further than the public reporting of uh, what we're seeing at the, as these demonstrations. It is totally fair and on the level for anybody to use their uh, uh, First Amendment rights to express their point of view peacefully on a particular foreign policy that the United States might be pursuing, that any government on the face of this planet might be pursuing. Uh, but it is also a, a, a moral imperative to ensure that in the midst of those demonstrations and in part of that process, uh, uh, charged offensive language does not become part of that discourse. Sure. 